Hello and welcome to another episode. Now, I'm joined today by Ollie Jones, who is Managing Director and Co-Founder of Elmo, the EV subscription service, which is helping people get an electric car sooner. So welcome to the show, Ollie. That's really good to see you. Um, can you tell me a bit about what, what Elmo is and why, why you started it? Thank, thanks, Robert. So, I mean, as you said, Elmo is an electric car subscription service. And the mission behind that is to make switching to electric car possible for more people sooner to be the easiest way for someone to switch to an electric car. It all started back in 2019. Um, an old school friend, Luke, Luke Gavin, he, we caught up over the new year and he'd been, he'd actually been an early, an early team member at Octopus Energy and he'd then been uh, consulting on projects to do with uh, easing the energy transition, the e-mobility transition. And he'd sort of started to form the kernel of an idea um, for using a subscription business model bundled up into a convenient package that could help uh, help ease some of the barriers to adoption that mass market consumers were facing when thinking about switching to electric car. And now we're at the stage when we're trying to really scale up and have a, a meaningful impact to really try and turn the dial when it comes to reducing carbon emissions through uh, consumer transport. So the, the term car subscription sounds a bit weird. I mean, I'm used to like, like a Netflix subscription. I understand that. So what, can you ex explain what that entails? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a similar principle, right? And it's, it's all about flexibility. On Elmo, what it means is that you can book a car online in five minutes. You get verified by a team within, within 24 hours. And then you can usually have a car delivered within a week. When you sign up, there's no deposit to pay. There's no long contract. You just give 30 days notice at, at any point and we'll come and collect the car or swap it to a different car. And the package that, that the car turns up with includes insurance, maintenance, uh, servicing, congestion charge, basically everything you need to, to, start to, to drive the car. We also offer additional options, such as including a home charge point, access to public charging. And the idea is to get as close, close as possible to uh, a subscription package that covers the, the total cost of running that car. So Ollie, what is the difference then between a subscription service and leasing? Because I lease a car now, I understand what that means. So, so how is it different to, to have a subscription? Yeah, so, so in general, it just means increased flexibility. Traditional lease, you'll lock in for two, three, four years. And you're locked in with the same car as well. Right? Locked in with the same yeah. car, exactly. Yeah. The same package, you, you can't change it without paying a penalty. And so with the subscription, you, it, it varies. Some subscriptions, like an Elmo subscription, are monthly. Some of them you'll be required to lock in for a period of time, but not anywhere near as much as a traditional lease. But with those subscriptions, um, with some subscriptions rather, you're required to pay a premium, a premium for that flexibility. Whereas on Elmo, what we're trying to do is be price competitive with a traditional lease, but without the up, big upfront deposit you have to pay, without the long contract term, and then with the, those ancillaries, insurance, maintenance, et cetera, bundled up into a convenient package. Articulating that is a key part of how we try to explain our proposition. And so for each, every model on our website, that information is presented in a table, how it would compare versus a, a two, three, four year lease and what it costs on subscription. Because what you get at the top is the subscription price, which includes everything, it looks more expensive versus a, just the lease. But then when you start to add in the other costs for well, the insurance, the other costs required them, to run yeah. the car, plus the factor in the deposit split over the term, you realize that um, we're, we, we're price competitive. So, I mean, I know you were at Fully Charged Live uh, this year, and I, the, the two times I walked past your stand, well, I couldn't see you or anyone there because it was just packed. I mean, you had a lot of interest there. I mean, was, that, was, that, was it a successful experience for, from your point of view? It, it, it was a huge success. Uh, it was probably the first time that we've been out in the wild in, in, in sort of, in a, a sort of at scale. Um, we had our whole team there talking to customers. We had people who were actually driving our cars turn up just, just to talk to us. Wow. And so there was a real sense of community around what we're doing, which, which we think is really important because of our, you know, we're very mission driven. And our, and our drivers sharing their experience with other drivers is a really key part of pushing that, the progress of that mission forward. What was interesting to hear from people who were there who weren't our drivers, what, what, the, what the barriers they found when looking, because they're all there looking, yeah. potentially interested, but they haven't switched. So why haven't they switched? And for a lot of people, it was simply cost. A new electric car is expensive, probably around five to 10,000 pounds, more expensive than the equivalent ICE model. 
Uh, for some people, it's just unfamiliarity around the, the technology. So they know I was going to the petrol station, top up with fuel. But when it comes to Chadamo and, and kilowatt hours and yeah. types of cables, it, it's, it's all alien and, and unfamiliar. Uh, for others, it's actually the risk on the asset. So they think, oh, there's so much technology coming out. It's improving all the time. Why don't I just wait for two years and then I'll switch? So all of those sort of combine in different ways for different people, but create this effect of people being sitting on the fence about switching. And we say to them, well, with Elmo, there's no risk because if it doesn't fit your lifestyle, you don't like it after the first month, you yeah. can hand it back. Um, plus, you're not paying any extra because, as I said, we're price competitive with a traditional lease. Um, so, so what have you got to lose? Try it. Um, it's like for some people, it's an extended test drive um, before they buy a car. For other people, it's, you know, they're waiting for, for a lease car that's going to arrive. Uh, and, and for others, it's actually a long term solution because they can have it for nine months. They can go and work in Portugal for, for three months, come back to the UK and they can start up again. So it, it fits a sort of a broad range of, um, of demographics. But we really think and we rather grandiosely claim that we've reimagined the traditional lease uh, and used that as a mechanism to try and help accelerate adoption of, of electric cars. So one of the things that I'm very aware of that we're facing at the moment is availability, is the, is the lack of uh, electric vehicles that people can get. A lot of people trying to buy them, having to wait months. Is, is that an issue for, for Elmo as well? It's not so much an issue for us. I mean, as you said, it is a, it is a constrained market and there are unfortunate circumstances, um, the long tail effect of COVID, for example, that has caused that. We're in the fortunate position where we have very strong relationships with manufacturers, with, with dealerships, and so have pretty good access to vehicles, which means that many of the cars listed on our website, you can book online and a week later, we'll deliver them to your door with, with a smile. Right. That is a big difference to waiting 18 months, which is what I know some people are doing. And actually, what, when what we've seen, we've got people who are now, these aren't really the people switching, but people who are on their sort of second or third electric car. They've, got, they've ordered one on lease, but they've just been told it's going to be after Christmas. Yeah. And, uh, and so they've come to us and they'll take a subscription for, for nine, 12 months and, until that lease car arrives. So now when people decide to do it and they get in a new electric car, I mean, it's, it's exciting, but also quite challenging. I've met people who were sold an electric car without any information of how to use it, how to plug it in, how to charge it, all those things. If they get one from Elmo, do you give them a little bit of help? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I remember the first time I went to a, a public charge point, utterly terrified, yeah. utterly terrified. And um, so one of the, the education is a really key part of what we're doing. That starts online. We have a suitability tool before, before they've even booked the car, which is an interactive questionnaire. It takes people through the input data points about their lifestyle, and then it gives them a readout on, on how different makes and models would fit with their lifestyle. So that's the start of the process of trying to make people feel comfortable. They then, we then say, well, why don't you try one risk-free subscription? If you don't like it, you hand it back. They then get the car. We turn up a week later with a smile and, um, and then the, the driver can spend up to an hour with, with the customer right. showing them how the car works, how to pair their phone, but crucially also how to charge it, what the different cables do, the, the granny charger for using it at home, the type two, et cetera, et cetera. And then of course, there's the aftercare service. And one of the things that we've tried to focus on really heavily is training our team EVs, it's, it's, it's a whole new world. We've got people who've come from an automotive background, but not EV. And so our, our, our customer experience people, we call them EV specialists. And they go through a, quite a rigorous training process, um, which involves lots of e-learning, but also hands-on um, learning with, with the vehicles, with charging. And they're on hand. So whenever a customer calls up with a problem, they're speaking to someone who's actually got hands-on experience of a broken down charge point or a car not connecting properly. Etc., and that continues throughout the whole whole time, the whole life cycle of that customer being with us. So, so if I get my electric car from Elmo, so what other help can you give me? You know, if you've never had an electric car, charging at home can be a bit of a mystery. Yeah, we, we realised very early on that it was a key part of the experience for people switching to electric car that we were there to help them with all the other bits and bobs that need to be sorted around the experience of, of having that car. And of course, that means different things for, for different people. Some people are lucky enough to have off-street parking so they can have a home charge point. We can help them with that. We have preferred partners. We do the installation. For other people, they, have, they don't have off-street parking. They need to use public, the public charging network. And when in the process of launching an Elmo Charge card and app, which aggregates many of the leading 
uh, charging networks and the card will give you access to all of them so you can rock up and charge um, pretty much wherever ever you need to. So what are your plans for the future, Ollie? I mean, uh, how are you going to make it even easier for people to, to, to switch to an EV? Yeah, two, two of the key things that we're focused on at the moment is the, the Elmo Charge app and card that, that I mentioned. Um, as you'll know, an interoperable solution is, is something that's yeah. the UK market is, yes. being, is being crying out for. Um, and, and, the, and now a solution is starting to emerge and we're going to be part of that and it will be a great, a great solution specifically for, for Elmo customers. The second thing, which is something that we're particularly excited about, and it really it ties in with our mission. Right? Our mission is to make switching to electric car easy. And salary sacrifice has been around as a benefit for employees. Uh, you sit in the cycle to work scheme, et cetera. Because of the benefit in kind tax until April 2025 is very low on electric cars. It means that an employee can save on the cost of a, in, in our case, a subscription, by 30 to 60% of the price, which is like, which is a whopping yeah. amount. Um, who wouldn't do that if, if they could? Now to do that, their, their, their employer needs to set up a scheme. So what we're now offering to, to employers is a fully managed scheme. So we do all the legwork. We do the, the payroll instructions and calculations, the submissions to HMRC, so they're completely compliant. We run that for them and we educate their employees on what it means for them. So that, so that they end up with a, with a great perk. And best of all, the, the employer, there's no cost for the employer. The employer can actually save on VAT and national insurance. And I guess the, the advantage over a salary sacrifice subscription with Elmo over a salary sacrifice lease, which, which exists, um, is that with a lease, as we know, you're locked in for three, four years. That means there's an early termination penalty if you, try, if you need to break out of that salary sacrifice. With Elmo, we're used to the cars coming back so the employer has no liability for any early termination if, if the member of staff leaves for, for whatever reason. So it means that the risk for an employer setting up salary sacrifice with us is, is, is basically negligible. So Ollie, is there somewhere people can go where they can find out more about the arrangements with salary sacrifice? Yeah, absolutely. There's a business section of our website which explains all the benefits, the process, there's a calculator, all of it much more clearly than, than, than I ever could in person. <laughs> So some of our audience watching, you know, still deciding, you know, whether to make the switch to an EV. I mean, have you got any tips that might, you know, they're sitting on the fence that you can gently help them off the fence and, and, and move to an EV? I mean, I think generally speaking, it's, it's confidence. Like a lot of people, they drive an EV for the first time, they live with it for a month and they're like, wow, yeah. it's, it's fantastic. It's, it's so smooth to drive. It's so quiet. It's, 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 it's a real pleasure. We try and help people through that journey as a suitability tool that I've mentioned, but then taking the plunge, the plunge, the little, the little plunge <laughs> of signing up to a one month rolling subscription means that you can have the car, live with it for the first month. If you don't like it, you hand, you hand it back. And if you do like it, you can continue, continue with it. And that's a, a really, a, well, we found that to be, and our customers, I think would agree, we found that to be a great way of dipping your toe and then, and then making, the, making the plunge. So what do you see in the future, really? Well, I mean, how are you going to persuade like a real committed petrol head to, to switch to an EV? I think that the future is inevitably electric. And I like to think that subscription is going to play a, hu a huge role in that. I think at the, at the end of 2020, there were something like 5,000 subscription cars in the UK. And it's now estimated to be, by, by the end of 2025, 600,000 which in, in car terms is, is, a, is a huge sort of hockey stick growth um, for subscriptions. And I think that's testament to the way that it, it feeds into what modern consumers are looking for. But on the electric side of it, I'm looking forward to the day when we no longer say electric car, we no longer say EV, we just say car. Yeah. And it's how we get to that point. How do we get, how do we get the petrol heads to become a little bit more open? And I, and I think it, it starts with the, the necessity of of having to use an electric car, at least as your runabout car, whether that's because you want to avoid uh, low emission zone charges, uh, or you want to, uh, you know, reduce air pollution on your on your school run. And then if people only drive their petrol cars on the weekend or for, for pleasure trips, they will slowly be moved aside in the way that horses were. But but they're still doing their bit um, by driving an electric car most of the time for reducing carbon uh, and air pollution emissions.
Well, thanks so much, Ollie. That's really good to hear what you're doing. You know, best of luck with Elmo. I think it's a brilliant idea. I really hope it catches on. Thanks very much. It's been fun. Well, that's it for this episode. All the links to Elmo are in the description box beneath this video. Uh, please do like and subscribe to this channel, as that really helps us to continue to make more fascinating episodes. That's it. As always, if you have been, thank you for watching.